Hi, this is a game between Hikaru and uh, Levon Oronian in a video Grand Prix tournament and it's a mm, death or life game for Hikaru. If he doesn't manage to win this game, most likely he will be in, eliminated from for the Grand Prix. On the other hand, this game features very nice lesson in end game. This is why I want to take you quickly to the end game. Don't discuss too much about the opening. Levon of course wants to go for Berlin defense, but Hikaru avoids as much as possible to not reach the symmetrical position to uh, avoid the theoretical rows. And even after developing pieces, we see lots of peace maneuvers that I quickly skip them all to reach the end game. So here we see massive exchange of queens and pieces and at this position just quickly let's uh, evaluate the position white has two knights attacking the a pawn black has a bishop and knight and everything is equal basically black says that okay grab the a pawn that's not a big deal i will destroy your pawn structure by grabbing the knight and this is exactly what happens and it's very hard for white to take care of both h2 and f3 pawns and one of them will fall at some point so uh, temporarily black is up a, um, white is up a pawn but black will get captured anyways let's go forward a little bit again to reach to the critical position that i want to discuss here is where black uh, recaptures one of the miss pawns not the miss pawns the miss pawn and goes behind the a pawn all good now white or hikaru for whatever reason tries uh, it decides to exchange the knight to simplify the game actually and it's a uh, move 30 and close to the um, time limit so and, and making some move is good anyways uh, takes takes and now white position is a slightly better or a lot better because white has a pass pawn pass d pawn but of course it's not an easy job for white to make it a queen because there are two rooks on the board what would you play at this position here is a very critical point of the game what is the basic principle that you learned from rook and pawn end games if you didn't learn then watch my tactic videos my end game videos there are lots of uh, uh, there are lots of them talking exactly about this point yes in the rook and pawn end game you wish to put the rook behind the past pawn whether it is your own past pawn or your opponent's past pawn you should always try to put it behind the past pawn but Levon, at this position, puts the rook in front of the pass pawn. Okay, you may say that how he could put it behind the pass pawn, right? He could do that by gaining a tempo, for example, going a3, attacking the f3 pawn. Of course, first of all, I should tell you uh, this is an impossible move for black. This is a clear win for white. Rook, um, black cannot afford exchanging the rooks. But black could have gone to a3 attacking the f3 pawn. You may say that okay, white. Uh, if white does not do anything, for example, if white plays careless, then black can. Uh, uh, black first defends that pawn and then later goes behind the d pawn, or similar thing that we will see soon. But if white tries to first uh, examine black, black can repeat the position. And then finally, at uh, this point, White goes to uh, White should uh, change the move. He cannot repeat the position, right? But then, when White goes there, of course, Black should defend the uh, G pawn. Otherwise, Mate is in the corner. And if White tries to be a sneaky, it doesn't help because Black can attack the B pawn. If White tries to take care of the B pawn, Black can attack the D pawn. But you may say that why why should play that why it can attack the b pawn right then is the point that we discuss we can't go behind the pass pawn of course white can defend it but it's very difficult for white to hold this game and uh, black can give up one or two pawns but then the position is quite rich 
Of course, black has two white has two pass pawns, so it's very dangerous. But still, it's very difficult for white to um, take advantage of that, especially that black can uh, reach perpetual check. White should retreat one of the rooks, then the rooks of black can go again behind the pawns and pick them up. The pawns are not too advanced yet. But what happened in the game was that Levon didn't play that. Levon went in front of the pawn and here there is a big change in the evaluation bar. Before that it was plus one but not an easy plus one to convert. But right now it's plus um, uh, 4 or 5 by engine Because white has a very easy task Not only can push the pawn, can also attack the g-pawn and uh, threaten mate Black should uh, um, first vacate the space for his king And white can push the pawns uh, And here white played masterpiece somehow I mean from human point of view, engine doesn't like all moves of Hikaru but played very very nicely and practically very good so the pawn is advanced and here there is another beautiful tactic in this position at this position he plays a sneaky move of pawn f4 notice that I let me tell you something he couldn't simply play rook there because black simply grabs this pawn and what do you do you cannot give a check or anything if you get up that rook, grabs your rook, and this is no, only black can win this game, let's say. Not only, but it's very difficult for white to make any progress here. So, Hikaru played a sneaky move of f4. What's the point of this move? Because this time, if black captures this, white can play rook uh, c8. And this is very beautiful because if um, Black captures that pawn, this time white has this sneaky check And after this check, can grab the rook And clearly white is winning But in the original position, in this position, uh, there wasn't such a check Because after it captures, uh, if you check, it simply grabs So this is the uh, philosophy behind that uh, sneaky move of Hikaru And of course Levon doesn't fall for it And Hikaru says that okay I'm a pawn grabber and I will grab all the pawns And, uh, and uh, Levon said that I will double and grab your advanced pass pawn But actually uh, here is where I say that Hikaru played masterpiece First exchange is a pair of rooks. No, it was a mate, right? I mean, black has, black had to exchange, right? I mean, if black was playing anything, anything. Let's say this. Okay, this was a mate, and black had to exchange one pair of rooks, and now this is a beautiful part. White has an uh, uh, extra pass pawn. Uh, two extra pass pawn, but one of them is gunner. But the B pawn is far advanced, and black king cannot reach it. But usually, again in such position, rook goes behind the pawn, and um, white uh, uh, rook should go behind the pawn, and uh, this is what uh, Levon doesn't do that at all. But usually, rook goes behind the pawn, and white finds the shelter in some corner uh, sorry black king find, finds a shelter in some corner and tries to keep the pawn busy but this is not the case in this position because um, black has to defend the h pawn with the king otherwise white can push the f pawn and there is no uh, can push the f pawn and defend that f pawn with its king so black should take care of the edge pawn, but black cannot do much here. Black gives a check, but then uh, by king h3, basically this is basically the end of the game. Mm, the black tries to hold on the pawn, but this is very easy win for Hikaru. Actually, earlier uh, Levon resigned, but I find it constructive to show you what is the plan here. 
Yes, with this um, brilliant endgame play by Hikaru, Hikaru has a chance to stay in with the Grand Prix and if he stays, he has a chance, a big chance to reach the candidate. I hope you enjoyed, don't forget to like the video, bye.